hello you guys welcome back to my channel welcome back to my classroom to my little teacher corner it's a thursday i just finished a day of work i had such a good day today with my kids i'm like so happy today i wanted to kind of like sit down it's kind of like the end of the year now it's april and i feel like i want to give out some advice for my first year teachers that are about to be teachers on just like how to survive your first year as a teacher i might do this in like two parts i have 10 tips that I'm gonna give today in this video, but I feel like I could talk about this forever. Side note, I feel like I've been seeing a lot of negativity on like TikTok especially because I just discovered that there's like this whole like quit talk, like teacher quit talk, and that just makes me so sad and like I understand why people want to quit, but I'm gonna bring in some positivity into this video and like motivating people who want to be teachers because I know there's so many people out there right now that are like trying to figure out how they're gonna survive their first year teaching and like I've been there before and getting your own classroom is so, so different than going through your internship. Let's just get right into this. I'm gonna go through, I like made a little list of 10 tips so that I stay on topic and that this video isn't like a million years long. But yeah, if you guys are new here, thank you so much for being here. Um, make sure to check out my other videos. I'll link one up here of like my week in the life of teaching. Let's get into it. Tip number one stick to contract hours as much as possible. I've decided to put this as the first tip because I feel like you really have to take care of yourself as a teacher and like just in order to show up for these kids. So sticking to contract hours, I could do a whole entire video about this because I think it's something really, really difficult to do, but I think that it's so important to try as much as possible to leave at contract time, even if you have work that you still need to do, like try to get the physical like work that you need to get done here, like whether that be organizing, printing, things like that. And if you still have work to do, at least just like leave your classroom and do it like at a coffee shop, go do your work at home. I've like noticed that that has helped me so much just to like, you know, get out of this space and change up your space because you're here all day long. Yeah, if you guys want like more of a detailed video of like how I've been able to accomplish that and how I've been able to stick to contract hours, let me know and I can try to do that. But that's my first tip. Just get out of here. When, when contract time is up, like try to get out just for your mental health and your sanity. Tip number two, honestly kind of goes along with how I've been able to do tip number one, is making prioritized to-do lists. My to-do list is ongoing. Like there are always things that I can be doing and I feel like that's a really hard thing to get past, like leaving work and knowing that you still have a long to-do list. And it's definitely something you have to work on like more mentally as you start teaching. The prioritized to-do list really is like, I will highlight the things that I must get done before I leave. Like if I don't get these things done, I will stay later to get them done because like I won't be able to have a good day the next day like if I don't get these things done. So that would be things like planning. Like if I'm not planned for the next day, I can't leave because I need to get that done. Um, or if there's something really urgent that you need to figure out with a parent or a child, like make sure you have it prioritized. So like the things that you like don't really need to get done but might be things that you want to get done like let's say organizing my classroom library that's always at the bottom of my list or like organizing my toys or cleaning the closet like that's always at the bottom of my list and only some days does that get done um so just keep that prioritized to-do list and that will help you stick to contract hours and be able to leave on time tip number three i wish i would have listened to this earlier asking for help. Let's say you have, hypothetically, um, like a difficult behavior situation in your classroom and it is your first year teaching. You are learning how to navigate these situations. Like you are not supposed to be perfect. You are not meant to be perfect. It is our first year doing this. I definitely remember like waiting way too late to like reach out for help with behavior problems um, and just like figuring out what to do. So I think it's always better to reach out in advance. So like reaching out to your behavior specialist at school or even just like asking your team members that are on your team, like what would you do in this situation? Like, do you think I'm doing things the right way? Like, is there anything that I could change or do better? Like, having like a go-to person to even just vent to will help make your life easier, especially since they have so much more experience than you do and they've maybe been in situations that you need help with. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Tip number four, have as much communication with parents as possible. Now, this tip I feel like just helps make the year go a lot smoother when you do have maybe some behavior problems or you're concerned about the progress that a student is making. It's just so much better when you are consistent 
and have those open relationships with students. So something that I do is I have class dojo and then every single day I send home, um, we have like a behavior chart of how the student is doing. And sometimes I'll do something like even as simple as just taking a sticky note and like writing a little note. Like it can be a positive note, a negative note, not negative, but like a positive or a constructive note of like, hey, like maybe we need to work on this at home. Um, it takes like two extra seconds to just like write a sticky note. I always keep sticky notes like in my little pile of things here. Other thing tied in with this, I would say is to not only contact parents when there are maybe problems in the classroom, I think it's really important to contact parents when you see things that are going really well so that they don't associate like the teacher calling home or the teacher sending a message home as something negative. Tip number five kind of goes more towards planning. Always over prep. I have a stack in here, a miscellaneous drawer. In my miscellaneous drawer, I have extra activities just in case what I've planned for the day, something goes a lot quicker than I expected. Or maybe some kids finished really, really early and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna have them do? Have an extra stack of like activities, extra practice, like spiral review things, and going along with that. Okay, we're gonna get up for this one. Um, have for reading and math, have like extra early finisher open-ended activities so like an open-ended activity for example i have these little domino edition sheets that one's dirty hang on i have these little domino edition sheets and it's open-ended because they can create whatever math problem they want on here or um just something where you can be like okay you finished early this is our routine this is our procedure you come over to here you get your early finisher activity blah 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 um, and for reading, what I've been doing is we do something just called like quiet read, which is basically a procedure that I've set with my students where they can choose whatever book they want to from the library and they can come sit on the carpet and just read quietly while everybody else finishes. So that's like a very open-ended activity that doesn't have a time limit. Like they shouldn't finish, right? So that's really helpful with like classroom management and like your kids that finish activities really early. Tip number six, collaboration. This kind of goes back to asking for help, um, but I kind of felt like at the beginning of the year, like my team didn't collaborate as much. And um, I think that even if you're the first year teacher, like you can be the person to kind of initiate that if you feel comfortable doing that. And I think it's a great thing to always try to initiate is just making sure that you're sharing resources so like I kind of started sharing resources and then like we all start sharing resources and it just becomes kind of like a regular thing where we're like oh I'm doing this fun thing in my class and so then you send it and I know that it's very different depending on the school that you're at because I've been in schools where like collaborative planning is like the go-to like they are always sticking to the same thing but when I like got to this school that wasn't really the norm so just trying to collaborate as much as possible it will lessen your workload as a teacher and I mean everybody else's workload as well will be lessened when you guys are all like sharing different activities different ideas it just makes everything so much easier tip number ocho tip number eight I feel like this is just like one of the qualities of a good teacher or being a teacher is being flexible and it's a learning process because I feel like you're kind of just like thrown into this profession and even though you've done your internship I cannot stress like how different it is once you have your own classroom things are constantly changing you have 18 little different personalities in your class they're at different levels they have different emotions every day especially with the emotions you have to be so flexible like with changing your lesson plan changing up an activity so like kind of along the lines of being flexible have those back pocket activities that you can bring out games brain breaks if kids need it like if there's a rainy day and a full moon and it's the day after halloween not a lot of learning will get done and it is okay and just like go with the flow of your kids energy levels because sometimes if you try to go against it it makes it worse so like if your kids are having a silly day sometimes i just go along with it and like i act a little bit silly and i like will make them like practice their words in different voices like i'll be like okay use like your soft speaking voice or like use like an elephant speaking voice which sometimes gets out of control or like do it in a really high voice or do it in a really low voice like 
just like when they're silly, kind of like going with them because they're kids. At the end of the day, they're kids and they're supposed to be having fun. Tip number nine to survive your first year teaching, trial and error. The amount of things that I have tried to do this year that have failed is like, I can make a whole list of them. I tried to do, for example, like for stations, I tried to do something where they got to choose their own station. It didn't work. And maybe I didn't implement it the right way, but it just didn't work, okay? And you can't expect every single thing that you try to work in the classroom. And also, another thing I really learned was that something might work for, let's say, a month. And then it just starts to unravel and you're like, okay, I need to switch it up and I need to try something different. So I think that a lot of the times like we can be really hard on ourselves when something fails, but also you have to remember that like these are kids and they need they need consistency, but I think they within the consistency they also need a little bit of diversity, a little bit of change. They need to switch up the routine sometimes because they get really, really comfortable. So don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to fail uh, because you're going to. Lessons are going to fail and you're going to have to reteach them. You're going to have to teach them a different way. But honestly, those are the times when things have failed where I've come up with things on the spot, like while I'm teaching that I that end up working really well. Like that's when, when you're in like a desperate situation, you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? It actually helps you to be more creative and think of different things that could work with your students. So trial and error is a big one and you should be constantly in the trial and error process as a first year teacher. Finally, let's wrap it up with tip number 10, which is more of a mental health tip again. Don't be too hard on yourself, okay? And I feel like I really was thinking about this the other day because I had a really difficult day and I was just like thinking so much about like what I did wrong as a teacher. I've like talked about this before in my videos, like when you start to put the blame so much on you and you're just like really hard on yourself and you're like, I should have done this, I should have done this. And instead turning it like into more of a positive and just like I intentionally a couple days ago when I had like a difficult day I intentionally sat down I like closed my eyes and I was like okay Christina what went well during the day and then when I started thinking about all the things that went well I was like okay wait that was only a small portion of the day that was challenging and that doesn't need to make my day bad so even if that's just like i said i just like sat and like thought about the positive for a little bit um or if you could like write down all the positive things that happened although like we don't really have time to do that so that's why i just like took a moment to myself or i've seen teachers that have like little folders that have like the reason why they're teaching and it has like little pictures that kids have drawn them or things like that those are all of my 10 tips i think i'll probably do a part two um, just because there's so much to talk about about being a first-year teacher But I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little like chit chat Let me know if you guys like this style video or if you like vlogs more But I hope that people found this helpful and that you feel like inspired to be a teacher and like these tips are supposed to help overcome the challenging days and just make life a little bit easier. Um, I don't want to discourage people from becoming teachers because like I love it even on the difficult days like when I think about it overall like I really do love it. Overall I'm happy as a first year teacher and I am surviving. I hope you guys had a great day and like I said I hope you enjoyed and found some of this information helpful but yes I will see you all in my next video. Bye!